I'm going to run you through how to make this. Every single thing you need to know, all the recipes and where to get all the materials is in one PDF file on my website. It's a free PDF. It has everything you need to know. So I will start with these tubes. Inside, I have already added approximately three quarters of an inch to one inch of either plaster of Paris, or in my case, I prefer a two-part epoxy with glass microspheres. And that is just a, a very common filler. The glass microspheres are full of air, so they insulate very well. But I'll say if you're not, if you don't want to buy all that crap, you can just use plaster of Paris. Just be sure you allow it to dry. The next step we do is get some water glass, which is sodium silicate. And we're just gonna fireproof this tube. We can literally just pour it in. Just spin it around, let it um, coat the side walls, dump it out, dip it. So we got the inside and now we're doing the outside. You could also brush it on, you don't need to be a savage. I'm just using my fingers because I don't really care. Okay, I'm just gonna change my gloves. So we have the epoxy inside with the with the filler or plaster of Paris, <clears throat> three quarters of an inch up or one inch. Then we have the whole side the whole tube inside and out coated in water glass, sodium silicate. Alright, here's a cool tip for the composition mixing. You can mix the potassium chlorate, stearic acid, sugar, and magnesium carbonate as a kind of a master mix, and then just add the col you know add the colors that you want or the white or the TPA that you want accordingly because all the ratios for these are the same for the most part except for the color ratios. I have already made orange, red, green, violet, yellow, blue, so now I need to make white. And this is a formula that all I did was substitute terephilic acid for the proportion of dye that would normally be in one of these. So that's a great thing. They're, these are very flexible. Anyway, so we load this bad boy up. Oh, also, when you're making this composition, be sure to grind the stearic acid independently and then add the magnesium carbonate and blend that as well before mixing. Just because those are, oh, the potassium chlorate. All right, you can add potassium chlorate to that too. You're not supposed to mix fuels and oxidizers, but magnesium carbonate will not react independently with potassium chlorate. So anything that's chunky, blend independently before mixing. You should not blend oxidizers and fuels together. All right, so we're going to load this up. So I, I usually load this up, and because it's so fluffy, uh, you kind of need to tap it, tap it down. Then I just pack it down with my thumb. Just push it slow so that the air won't, uh, the air can escape without everything coming up around you. All right. So we want to leave approximately five-eighths of an inch or so to a half an inch underneath this lip. And we're just going to pour on another layer of epoxy. Now, honestly, I don't wouldn't recommend plaster of Paris here because the water can penetrate into the composition. So uh, anyway, I'm going to mix up some epoxy and then load it up. Makes you think all oh, the world's a sunny day, oh yeah. All right, for the record, this is <laughs> way too thick, but uh, it's also a lot. I'm going to be wasting a lot for demonstration purposes. Anyway, 
and yeah, normally you can just pour it in here, but I guess I have to scoop it in. Load this up. Obviously, you should do this in large, well, not large batches, but I'd say like batches of like three or four, the same color. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to flatten this thing and then let this cure and I'll be back. This is cured. And now we are going to drill. This is a 3 8 inch drill bit. And this is the Mason B tube. Well, there's 12 of them included in my pull cord kit or wire pull kit. Um, this thing kind of works off of this kit, the ignition at least. It's on my website, inventionincarnate.com. I also have a grenade fuse kit. Q commercial. It. Yeah. <laughs> Another one. <laughs>so this roughly matches this diameter i am gonna have to ream this out a bit it's just i don't have the next size up <laughs> which would be oh a lot better hold on all right here we are so we're drilling through the epoxy layer all right so that's the epoxy layer right now i just gotta keep moving that's not that much. All right, so now we have a hollow core here. And now we are going to install a fuse. So I'm gonna to try to simplify this. There is, my favorite primer to use is the M83 starter mixture. I have a whole PDF file of primer mixtures on my website in the free PDF section if you're looking for something I'm going to do this with a storm match. This is this is insane. This is a Zippo ty Typhoon storm I got to take some of this off, but um, I'm gonna use a storm match just for the sake of you know ease of Reproduction, you know for the people out there who are making this I don't you don't need to go buying a whole bunch of obscure chemicals Unless if you're gonna be totally into this going to measure this to there cut that she should cut it at an angle to increase the cross-sectional surface area and now yeah, I gotta cut the shell first or the mantle because otherwise it'll crumble apart. All right. You don't need that much of this. Yeah, a normal size storm match would be great. This is ridiculous, but it's all right. There are better ways to do this, just so you know. A primer composition would be great, but I'm trying to make this an accessible um, thingy. And is this gonna fit with a zip tie? It will not fit with a zip tie. So I'm just going to do this. This is what I would normally use. Just gonna use this piece of cotton twine. I'm gonna do a constrictor hitch. And then this should be pretty sleek. Oh, wow, that's pretty good. So here's what we got. Now, I don't... <clears throat> the igniters, these pull, pull wire pull igniters, they are adequate for igniting fuse without primer, visco fuse without primer. A lot of times if I, I find if I add a primer to this and it's in close proximity to the wire pull, 
you know, the, uh, here, this thing. <clears throat> this is what they look like. I have a million videos on these. And here's the one you want to see. That's the most recent one. But, yeah, you can see here. It's a cup with ignition composition along the walls and then a section of coiled wire that's abraded with red phosphorus on it. Anyway, that's right there. So when this is in close proximity, if there's sometimes when you add a primer to this, it pops a little more than you want. But it's perfectly hot enough to ignite this uh, just straight up visco fuse. Oh my god, I have to ream this thing. That's right. Or else this won't fit. Yeah, that's not going to fit. Oh, good. <laughs> All right, hopefully this will fit now. All right, cool. Now we got that storm match on the bottom. This right here, we can trim this to f right about flush with the top. And then what we're going to do is use a small piece of this mason bee tubing. And then push this through here, load the cup in, and then yeah, Q-tip is ideal here. Ah, oh, there we go. Push this up. Oh, what? I'm using a hot glue gun, which this is a different procedure from normal. Normally I'd use CA glue. But what, what we're doing here is we're making a, an igniter that's ejected as soon as it heats up. So these things will eject this ignition system in order to open up that exit orifice a bit more. All right, so we have the igniter cup and the wire pole inside of this 5 16 inch mason bee tube. All we do is we put this over the fuse, push it down to flush. And then, actually, before we push it flush, we can glue around this thing. So, yeah, a hot glue gun, it'll all, this whole assembly will eject. Perfect. All right, so I trimmed that wire pull igniter. Now, here's a pro tip. On the inside of this cap, put some glue so that it does not pull through. Put some glue so it does not pull through. Activator. So now we puncture this. All right. Now we feed this wire pull through here. On the cap, tie a small overhand, well, actually a loose overhand knot. That's, this is reasonable. You just need something that'll lay flat so that we can CA glue it. I'll flatten that a little bit. And then activate it. Cool. All right, so we glued that. Now, this is important. This is an important step. Because this is a cheapo Amazon, you know, tube, this is not a firework, a uh, proper tube for a smoke grenade that has to withstand any pressure. So I'm just going to... The big thing is, is that the bottom will blow out. but we added epoxy or plaster of Paris in order to fight that. But I just add this fiberglass tape to reinforce the body of this a little bit. And you can also, I've also used, so this is what it looks like. That's the fiberglass tape. <laughs> Hold here, valve will pop out. It's intentional, don't spaz out and drop it. That's my label. And then I put a uh, sticker on top. To cover that thing but 
Here's another way I did it was just to use cotton twine, and then I I just poured thin CA glue over it so it hardened. Uh, so this has three wraps on it. Oh, that's not straight. Cool. And now I'll add. I feel like I'm gonna get some of my gloves on this thing. It's gonna stuck with the CA glue. Alright, now I'm just adding some CA glue. This is thin. Thin CA glue. Um, you could use epoxy. That would be a lot more logical. <laughs> but but uh, I'm trying to, you know... Oh. Alright, so let's see here. If I hold this down whilst curing it. Oh, and there's the, okay, good. All right, so now I'm just gonna activate this whole thing. Oh man, what is that on my hands? All right, so that's cured. But this is it, so this is the white one. I'm gonna paint this so it looks pretty for the thumbnail. And then, I'm going to test these out.